Perseus and the Seven Sisters. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Autumn is finally here, and there's a very special constellation that's going to be making its reappearance in the evening sky. That's right, James. Perseus the hero is back. And not only is he associated with a great story in the sky, but he also has some interesting celestial company. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Okay, we've got our sky set up for this week at 11 p.m. facing northeast. If you look more to the east, you'll see what looks like a tiny little dipper-shaped cluster of stars, the beautiful Seven Sisters. Now, most people can see only six stars here with the naked eye, but if you have really good eyesight or are wearing thick glasses like four eyes over there, you may see seven. And with a pair of binoculars, you can see several dozen. In reality, however, there are over 250 stars here, all much larger than our own sun and burning much, much hotter. Cosmically speaking, they're not very distant, only 400 light years away, which means we see the Pleiades not as they exist now, but as they existed 400 years ago, at about the same time Galileo trained a telescope on them and discovered them to be a family of dozens of suns. Nearby, we have the double cluster, which is in the constellation Perseus. First, look up and to the right of the North Star, where you'll see the five stars that trace out the M-shaped constellation of Cassiopeia the Queen. The double cluster is down and to the right of Cassiopeia, and you probably will need binoculars to see them. But if you are far away from city lights, you'll notice that they are embedded in the river of light we call the Milky Way. The double cluster of Perseus might not look like much at first, but each cluster has about 100 more stars than the Pleiades. The reason they aren't as bright as the Pleiades is because they are a whopping 7,000 light years away much further away than the Pleiades, which means we see them not as they exist now, but as they existed 7,000 years ago. However, like the Pleiades, the double cluster also consists of super hot blue-white stars, and through a small telescope you may be able to detect a few much cooler red ones. And imagine, if you can, what the twin clusters of Perseus would look like if they could be magically positioned in our skies as close as the Seven Sisters are. They'd be a dazzling sight to see. Speaking of dazzling stars, there are two in Perseus that we want you to check out. Let's head back to the Earth. Okay, we still have our skies set to 11 p.m., and at the center of the constellation Perseus, you'll see a star named Mirfak. Mirfak is Arabic for elbow. Looks more like his chest to me, but anyway, to the right of Mirfak, we see Perseus holding something in his outstretched arm. To the ancient Greeks, it's the star Algol, a.k.a. the winking eye of Medusa. She's the one with uh, snakes for hair that could turn you to stone with one look. But other cultures had some very frightening names for this star, like the specter's head, ghost's head, Satan's head, the double eye, and Dean's personal favorite, piled up corpses. Why such scary names? Well, Algol is no ordinary star. It's a special type of star called an eclipsing variable. Algol is really two stars that orbit each other. When the bigger, dimmer star blocks the light of the smaller, brighter star, Algol dims like clockwork every 2.87 days. Perseus is using Medusa's head to save Princess Andromeda from the sea monster constellation Cetus. Look farther to the southeast and maybe you can make out the sea monster. His outline looks more like a recliner chair. <laughs> Nevertheless, this was Poseidon's vicious pet sea monster who we see turned to stone by... Medusa's head! Algol strikes again. So, go outside and check out the Pleiades. And the double cluster of Perseus along with Mirfak his elbow. And Algol the winking eye of Medusa. It's all there when you...